Welcome everybody, we are very happy to welcome you to this first NBS breakfast. We hope that you have your coffee with you and that you're ready to start your day. I'm Mathilde Eli from Planté Cité, which is coordinating the communication and dissemination of the H2020 project Nature for Cities. You are now attending the first webinar of a series of five and we warmly invite you to follow the whole series. The full programmation is available on our website natureforcities.eu. The NBS breakfasts were created to help you discovering NBS and how they can help you in your projects to contribute building more resilient cities. We decided to start back to the basics by presenting you this morning the concept of NBS and trying to see if it's just another trendy concept or it's really a new shift to address the challenges cities have to face. My colleague Marion will introduce the concept and its characteristics. Then, for each NBS breakfast, we put a particular attention to give voice to real projects, to illustrate the thematics with practical examples. So today we are really happy to welcome Agnès Goulias, researcher and instigator of a bird-friendly garden in a school in Seged. So, Marion, I'm going to let you enlighten our participants on this concept of NBS. Well, thank you, Mathilde, and welcome everybody to this webinar. So, cities face different urban challenges regarding environment, climate, resources, society and economy. Let's see some of the challenges that can be addressed by NBS through examples from our Nature for Cities pilot sites. First, in the city of Zeget in Hungary, the city dwellers suffered from urban heat island, local temperature increased caused by urbanization that is very common in urban areas. This phenomenon was particularly intense in some sealed streets of the dense city centre. Then, the metropolitan region of Milan in Italy is affected by severe flood episodes because of a strong urbanization level and impervious surfaces. It increases water runoff while in the same time water events become more intense and frequent due to climate change. And finally, some peri-urban spaces of Alcalá de Henares in Spain had been very degraded by intensive agriculture and this phenomenon had caused an important loss of biodiversity. So how did the cities try to face these challenges? In Seget, to lower the temperatures, the city decided to introduce vegetation in the streets to plant trees and to reduce car space. Then, to mitigate flood risks in the north of Milan, a riverbank renaturation project has been realized on the Lura Valley to create natural water uh, retention surfaces. And finally, in Alcala de Henares, a renaturation project has been realized through the plantation of a edible forest in which uh, the citizens have been invited to take part to increase biodiversity. So this is only a little part of the challenges cities can face and only a little example of the possible answers to it. And what is important to notice is that the three NBS we've just seen have an important thing in common they provide multiple responses to urban challenges. If we take a look at our three examples, we see for the two first ones that they were realized to address uh, public health and security challenges across livable temperature, flood risks, mitigation. But in reality, they bring lots of indirect benefits to other challenges. For example, quality of life by the creation of green spaces, new spaces for biodiversity, more permeable soils, and those indirect benefits are called co-benefits. And in the last example in Alcala de Henares, even if public health and well-being wasn't directly targeted, it becomes a co-benefit by the creation of a new green space and the active participation of the population. You will meet this benefit in a lot of NBS projects because greening has a strong impact on sweet city dwellers' mental and physical health, but also because NBS implementation can provide ecosystem services. So NBS bring co-benefits regarding societal challenges. It is at the opposite of sectorial gray solutions, which would calculate an optimum for a given challenge. 
for example, for water management, the classical DAX systems focus on security challenge when the green infrastructure aims at accommodating protection efficiency and ecosystem restoration. This finally provides a generally more resilient protection in time. Indeed, if NBS are conceived in a good way and implemented in a good way, they will often be lower maintenance considering their entire life cycle. You can expect cost savings, energy and resources efficiency. Uh, indeed, if green spaces um, can require more management at the beginning, their benefits will increase in time, for example, with urban trees whereas the grey solution will tend to deteriorate and need more and more maintenance. So you can expect a better resilience in time to changes with NBS. But just pay attention not to systematically oppose NBS and grey solutions because in a lot of cases they can be complementary. So you hear about NBS and uh, other solutions such as green infrastructure, ecosystem services, and some of you might wonder what difference there could be between those notions and what is really new about NBS. So under the expression nature-based solutions, there was the necessity to gather a panel of concrete solutions that nature and ecosystems can teach us across their resilience and their adaptation strategies. It's all these solutions that have been gathered under the NBS concept. So it's an umbrella concept that aims at giving a better visibility to, uh, to NBS in front of grey solutions that are still prevailing today. Then the expression NBS is also less technical than others, so it can be self-explanatory. And therefore, non-experts can more easily assimilate the idea and this can facilitate the dialogue between all stakeholders. Just pay attention to what NBS are not to the limit of the concept, because to be considered a NBS, a solution must bring human well-being, be a living solution or be supported by the living, and bring benefits to biodiversity. These three requirements are in accordance with the IUCN global standard for NBS. Uh, biomimicry would, for example, not be an NBS. Now, you must want to know more about what NBS can concretely look like. So, considering the three requirements we've just talked about, the Nature for Cities project has created an NBS typology specifically for the urban context. The first characteristic of this typology is that it is multiscalar. Indeed, you can meet NBS at every spatial scale, from the city scale to the building or plot. But you can also meet NBS at every project scale, from planning to management. And this is why Nature for Cities partners have identified in the typology um, objects, shapes and physical projects, and strategies and actions as NBS. As strategies, indeed, NBS can be planning tools and regulations. You can, for example, meet strategies regarding ecological continuities or conservation and protection of spaces. You can see on the slide, the middle picture on the top represents the Petite Amazonie. It's a protected area in the middle of the city of Nantes in France, uh, which belongs to the Natura 2000 network. Then, on a more operational level, NBS can be physical projects. They can be technical solutions and urban greening projects of all sorts, uh, on soil, urban parks, urban forests, etc. They can be on buildings with um, green walls and roofs, and they can be uh, greening solutions around water management, such as wetlands, uh, swales, deep sealed areas, etc. And finally, NBS can be also actions such as um, ecological and integrated management actions of green spaces, for example, uh, waste management across composting, and they also can be monitoring actions like with the use of bioindicators. So this diversity uh, in this typology shows us that a wide number of urban planning can be concerned by the work with NBS and the aim of this typology is to be accessible to, to everyone from the cities and their policymakers and public urban planners 
urban professionals and other experts to the project managers, everyone can consider the use of NBS and the typology is accessible to citizens too. So if it isn't the only typology existing, it shows the diversity of NBS in urban space on strategic as operational levels, and it is accessible to non-experts and experts. Moreover, um, it is important to notice that NBS uh, different scales are interconnected. On the one hand, if you want to ensure the operational design of NBS, it will be as easier as their integration will have been thought in the planning strategies. And on the other hand, local solutions must be connected on global level to fulfill their ecological functions. For example, to manage water risks, solutions have to be thought on a global level. For example, you can, in planning strategies, you can limit soil sealing or facilitate riverbanks renaturation. But stronger vulnerabilities can be found on local levels if you have an important runoff or bigger flood risks, and they can need local adaptations. Uh, for example, some Dutch cities have invested in living pavements that are permeable to favor water infiltrations. So NBS intervene at interconnected scales. To help you assimilate the diversity of NBS and get inspiration for your projects, uh, in Nature for Cities, an interactive tool has been created to, it is the NBS Explorer. It is already av available on the website, you can already find it. We've told a lot about NBS, let's just get a review of their essential characteristics. So NBS are actions inspired by nature and natural functions that can help you to simultaneously address urban challenges uh, and bring co-benefits regarding human well-being and environment at different interconnected scales. Um, they also are living solutions that take part in functional ecosystems as much as possible. And what is important to notice is that NBS are very diverse from greening solutions to urban planning. So they can help you to cover a great diversity of needs from global to very local, from the biggest to the smallest, and from technical solutions to the most low-tech solutions. To conclude about NBS, I would suggest you not to see NBS so much as a new concept, but more to see them as a new approach for urban planning. Um, because as you can see, NBS with the projects we've seen, they are in continuity with existing projects. But thanks to the birth of new tools of the change of practices, they can help to push simple greening towards the creation of functional ecosystems with their local fauna and flora. And the real issue behind NBS is, is to be multidisciplinary, to cross skills, to create a dialogue between environmentalists and urban developers. So Nature for Cities is here to help you in that direction. The, the tools will not give you turnkey solutions because NBS are not a ready-to-use package, but it will guide you to find the good questions and levers regarding your urban specificities, vulnerabilities, your local challenges. And because indeed, NBS implementation will require an adapting, an adapted planning and a development. And this is all what we will develop in the next NBS breakfasts. Uh, just pay attention to keep a critical look about NBS because they mustn't be an alibi to urban development. They must bring a real reflection to develop cities with nature, to give a real place to biodiversity, to put functional soil in the city, etc. So let's now see a project that has been created to bring benefits to biodiversity and the co-benefits brought to other challenges. So let's listen to Agnes, who will talk about the bird-friendly garden. Um, first, Marion, we have um, a question in the chat. Yes. Uh, can Biomimi cry a solution inspired by ecosystems be considered as NBS? Living buildings, water-sensitive urban management. Um, so Jordan, I think that Marion already said that in the presentation. 
uh, biomimicry as itself can be uh, considered as an NBS. Um, and also, yes, you can maybe uh, precise uh, the definition of UECN that uh, st stated things this summer. Mm. As I said, the, the three important points about uh, this UIC, IUCN definition is that um, NBS must be inspired by nature, but also bring benefits to biodiversity. Uh, that's why uh, techniques like biomimicry would have not been integrated as NBS. Because you have those three elements, which are also um, to bring co-benefits for biodiversity and well-being and be inspired by the living. Thank you for your answer. I, I hope it answers your question, Jordan. So uh, if you have uh, other questions for Marion, you can ask them during Agnes' presentation. But for now, we are going to jump in a real project called Bird Friendly Garden. And we are going to start with a video. Let's make our courtyard nicer, and let's bring it closer to nature, so it can be a pleasant place for birds and children to be. On Earth Day 2016, we started developing the yard into a proper habitat. We planted shrubs and herbaceous annuals three meters deep along the 200 meter fence. We wanted to create a multi-tiered composition rich in different kinds of plants that could provide the birds with food and places to hide and nest. Eleven classes joined the Adopt a Garden movement, added plants, and have tended their part of the garden ever since. All the plant waste produced in the garden goes into the composter, which produces fertilizer that we regularly use for the soil. The third and fourth graders join the project with a herb garden. Since pollinating insects are happy to visit the herbs, they contribute to a wider range of food to make the garden more appealing for endangered species like the barn swallow and the house marten. The little ones planted thyme, lemongrass, and oregano seeds, and they propagated the basil with leaf and root cuttings. They also planted lavender and rosemary on the rooftop terrace. We couldn't leave our feathered friends in the lurch in winter. Clever, resourceful girls made beautiful bird feeders out of recycled waste and other items. Feeding them with care has borne fruit. The birds in the area often visit our bird feeders. As spring approached, it was time to prepare bird boxes. There was plenty of woodwork to do, so both dads and school employees helped us. We loved working together. We hope a lot of birds make these their home. In addition to the fact that beautifying the school grounds has made us a real team, these good ideas can also be brought home. We hope that the people in the neighborhood will be inspired to protect birds too. We truly owe a lot to our feathered friends. Because an average family of teeth mice consumes 6,000 harmful worms before the young birds leave the nest. Because you, the uh, number of blooming flowers, the number of bees increases too. And we had to thank the bees for one third of our food. Because a swallow consumes half a million mosquitoes in only one summer, this number of mosquitoes could suck all the blood of a human. Because the jackdaws can imitate the sound of a school bell, they could even finish our lessons earlier. Hi everybody. So, uh, as you can see in, uh, in this uh, small um, uh, introduction film, I would like to present you a small scale biodiversity improvement project following uh, the example of a school garden. But uh, uh, with half of this project, uh, it can be partially or fully extended to other schools so that it can be a significant improvement in biodiversity and also on a larger scale maybe this film was made uh, for an application for the fi uh, finnish uh, ministry of education we applied them uh, uh, there with the uh, in a best practice um, category and we won a first place we are very proud with this project so uh, maybe 
Not everybody knows where is Seged. Seged is in the middle of Europe, in the Carpathian Basin, in the southern part of Hungary. And because of its location, the climate is very dry and warm, and the continentality is very strong. So you can see the main, <clears throat> main numbers here. We have a lot of sunshine. We have the quite warm uh, temperature in, uh, in summer, and we have not so much uh, precipitation. It is hard, for example, to keep alive in a green space in our Saget. The primary school, it's Aramianos Elementary School, uh, is located in the northern part of, of the city uh, in a typical Eastern European block of flats area. Maybe uh, somebody knows this. Uh, surrounded by roads, very heavy traffic, which means a significant amount, um, amount of noise and air pollution. So it's a really hard challenge uh, to keep it away from, from the school garden. The basic idea of this uh, bird-friendly garden really started from the beginning when my son started the school. Um, in, in, uh, in the school, it was immediately apparent that it's a quite young school. It was built only uh, 30 years ago and very big, uh, with eight, uh, 800 students and uh, uh, 100 teachers and other staffs. The building is, uh, was specially designed for school purposes. You can see here the, the building. Um, school purposes and uh, was built together with the surrounding housing estates and this uh, huge water tower or sand so on. So luckily, a large garden was trimmed around the school by the designer. But except the trees, the other vegetation is very poor, but really very poor, but uh, we have a significant opportunities to exploit and the and they improve the situation. What are the opportunities that can be exploited? For example, we have a large free free spaces or free space. Uh, we have a relatively friendly microclimate due to the shade of many trees uh, on the uh, on the garden. We have more than uh, 100 trees on the garden in the garden. And on the right side there is also a small public park uh, for uh, green space connected to the school garden. Here is the school garden. Uh, so, which provides an opportunity to create a mini ecological network also. And uh, as, as you see that we have 800 child, uh, children uh, with 800 families, so we have nearly unlimited human resources. So, um, and most of them uh, are already enthusiastic for the gardening, it's much better than sitting in the lecture in, in the building. Um, as a first step, we did a detailed condition assessment with one of my teacher students. Uh, yes, uh, I'm a professor assistant at the university, so I have a lot of uh, students in different faculties, mostly geographers, environmental protectors, and, and teachers also. Um, so we made, we made a very detailed tree cadastre, bird monitoring, and so on and so on, to see where we are starting, starting from. So what is the situation uh, at the beginning? We also made a plan for um, how and with what kind of implementation could we transform the garden. So we, we plan a, a really significant improvement in the vegetation, and uh, uh, bird, uh, uh, some different uh, bird production equipment, so, and so on. So we, we made, it was the uh, master thesis of this uh, uh, students, uh, student. Uh, and we collected the difficulties that limit the project. Uh, what, is, what is this, what are these difficulties? So we have very, really very poor soil quality, as you, as you see. Um, it was a construction uh, area uh, early, earlier, so it's full of construction debris. The soil has really very wrong structure, near, nearly zero nutrients content, so it's really, really bad uh, condition of the soil. So we need a lot of compost, um, much more than we can produce. We, we make composting also, but it's, it's not enough. So all, all uh, all compost of the bird would, would be not enough uh, to improve the uh, soil uh, quality. Uh, as you see from the from the photo, uh, we have poor water supply also. So uh, in 
rainy weather, like it was in the last 20, 24 hours, there are parts of the yard that are under the water for several days or several weeks. But usually in Hungary, um, because of the continental climate in, in, uh, in summer, we have uh, drought. So it's a very dry condition. So that's why uh, we have uh, to find some sustainable water supply. Uh, possibilities or, or opportunities. And of course, we have 800 children, so there are a lot of children, it's so intensive use uh, and a very hard pressure on, uh, on the garden. So we need a sustainable sol solution to prevent uh, the garden, for example, uh, from the trampling damage or uh, everything. And as usually in a, a gar uh, school, uh, project. I don't know uh, how is it in the uh, other part of uh, Europe, but in Hungary, it's uh, always limited the financial resources. So we have to find always uh, cost effective solutions also, if we have some problem or if, if we would like to make some improvement. So um, first, um, first step so was the assessment. Next step, the most important, important step is the habitat development. So the diversity of vegetation has to be significantly increased. Uh, and after that, um, uh, could be increased the diversity of insects and birds. Uh, depending on our financial opportunities, we planted plants in several waves as last year, as you, as you see in the, on the map. Here was the beginning, and it was the almost uh, uh, part of the school garden. And uh, after that, we go, go a bit uh, outside. Um, uh, surrounding of the garden because of the connection to the to the public uh, spaces also and so on and so on in last year and this year we made uh, some planting here in the eastern part of the uh, garden what kind of results we have i don't know no. uh, yes this is the beginning so it, it, they, they are the pioneers they are the first uh, shrubs what we planted in the uh, at the beginning, and you can see some pictures um, uh, different, from different years. It was in a, a day of Earth uh, in uh, April. It was a really nice action. It's a November uh, 2017, 2018, and this, this was the uh, this summer of just after the quarantine. We we wanted to go out and take something activities in the garden because. It was really uh, uh, stressful, stressful with this quarantine. So um, parallelly with the planting, we carried out activities to increase the diversity of insects too. <clears throat> this is the first step. These plants are very popular uh, to the butterfly, for example. And we made some uh, pollinator protection actual activities also. We <clears throat> Uh, we made a bee hotel, two different type of bee, types of bee hotel. We can use the already bee hotel also. We made bird feeders also, bird feeders uh, from wood. It, uh, the wood was wood and, wood and seed was the nation for from the um, Hungarian Ornithological Society. So they are the proud maker. And we made a bird feeder also from, uh, from recycled waste. And this summer, we made a hand. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, we made boxes also, bird boxes, of course, because in the winter we, we put it all, uh, up to the trees. And this summer, we made handmade uh, swallow nest. Also, they, the children enjoyed it very, very much already, these activities, and my students also. Here are the, the already, it's better than the original. In, uh, 2018, we have uh, we've won a larger amount of money from the Hungarian Education Office, approximately uh, 3,000 euros, and with this help, uh, we were able to significantly and sustainably improve the water supply. We installed four half cubic meter large storm water storm water tanks, as you can see here. So now can the audience where you can see the results. Uh, what kind of results we have achieved in the last six years? We have significantly increased the diversity of the garden vegetation, as you see. Previously, there were no perennials, 
and the Schwarz line, Schwarz line, Schwarz line consisted of only two or three species. So we have now created an uh, approximately three meter uh, wide and uh, 200 meter long um, multi-level plant community along, uh, along the fence uh, with more than 50 uh, different species. Uh, all pictures are from uh, my camera, so you can see the diversity is much better than earlier. Thanks to many flowery plants, the species richness of pollinators has also increased significantly. Uh, you can see some example of this. All the uh, pictures may, was made in a garden. And these changes also had a positive effect on bird species numbers. We are very proud that much more birds visit our garden, for example, due to the winter feeding and the summer watering. More species nest in the garden. And since last year, a pair of swallows swallow have been nesting one, uh, on one of the balconies. And the, uh, this year, there were two breeding uh, and six nestlings left the nest. As you know, the swallows are very in hard conditions. Uh, uh, nearly half, half of the uh, number of swallows have disappeared in the last 10 years. So it's really in a hard imp improvement and a good improvement. And this unusual year, uh, because of the epidemic situation, also brought an unusual bird guests into the garden because uh, of the quarantine and there was a, a calm uh, period, unfortunately. Uh, sorry about the uh, quality of the picture, but I can't uh, make it with a really camera just in a phone. Uh, during the quarantine, this mullard deck couple visited the, our, our water pond regularly, regularly in, in um, spring. What kind of difficulties we have now? Um, as, uh, as I see, we, we've won a um, larger amount of money, so that's why we can, can vote a lot of uh, plants also, not, not only the water reservoir tanks, and we can plant it then in uh, 2018. But uh, for a few weeks in winter, in this winter, snow covered the, the fresh, freshly uh, planted garden, which is basically very good ec ecologically because of the water supply, but the kids didn't notice the small plants. And after the snow melted, we had these sad pictures. So nearly all of all of new planted uh, one part of uh, garden, nearly all the uh, uh, new planted uh, plants were destroyed by tramping. So there was an urgent need to find the cost effective solution of this. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we spent all of our money, so we have no, no money to, to, to have some solution, to buy some solution. Uh, at the university, I have a so-called so nature protection in practice course, where we do active conservation treatment, treatment with, with my students, um, mostly, for example, in, along the river. Uh, maybe you, you remember we have a river uh, um, uh, ties, so-called ties. And the invasive Amorpha fruticosa is very widespread in this uh, floodplain. Uh, and what is harmful and to be destroyed uh, along the river, that is a treasure in the school garden. Uh, here is the branches. So uh, we, may, uh, we cut it, uh, lots of invasive species. They have uh, very flexible branches. Uh, of course, the harder branches, um, are from uh, willow because it's native, so it's, it would be not good if 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 it, if it would be it will be really grow out out. It it usually uh, you, uh, make it uh, grow out uh, in a uh, non-native species. And we made a fence, a natural fence in the garden. Um, my students are some students, uh, bigger, uh, older students uh, from the from the uh, school also. Uh, it, so you can see here, uh, our brand new, it's okay. It's only a uh, optical, Re really just an op uh, optical barrier, but it's worked really very good. Uh, the kids respect it and the cost is almost zero. So it's absolutely a good, good solution uh, to this problem. And now is no problem with the tramping uh, damages. Another problem is the weed pressure, uh, pressure 
you can see the huge weeds we have and a lot of weeds because the small plants do not completely cover the soil so there is a lot of free ecological niches where weeds grow. Uh, this requires a lot of human resources. Okay, normally in semester we have unlimited um, uh, human resources, but in summer it's not so easy to, to solve this problem. So we have uh, we are planting another planting in the end of this October. We will get a larger amount of perennials from one of my gardener friends, uh, with which we will hopefully be able to achieve a more soil cover and can. Uh, can uh, um, uh, improve this situation because of this weed uh, pressure. Hopefully, the garden will, will be uh, something similar than you can see here. Uh, see here. So, um, in addition to ecological services, the potential for environmental education in such a project is really endless. So, really. During the activities, we share the attitude of the children almost unnoticed. Uh, the smaller one, it's some, something hard to find the fitting path to the fitting ages, because, for example, the, the smaller smaller ch uh, children uh, enjoy very much gardening and uh, handmade things and the bee hotels and so on and so on. But it's, it, it is something boring for the elders. But it could be. An exciting challenge for the older one to create a live live camp broadcast from the inhabited nest or, or the swallow nest uh, on the school website. It's uh, one of our uh, plans in, in the future. We can uh, make a live live camp <coughs> on the website. Uh, it's unfortunately not my my picture. It's a plan, but it's very exciting for the old, uh, older ones. And our future plan is to make a Another to implement another uh, NDS in the garden because uh, uh, because we want to create a uh, green fence something similar that here or here and, uh, as a living wall between the busy road and the and the school garden to redu reduce the noise and air pollution more effect effective effectively than than now because uh, you maybe you remember that we uh, next to the school garden we have a really very busy uh, road and it's uh, uh, not so comfortable conditions because of the noise and air pollution. So thank you very much for, for your attention. If uh, and if you have any question and comments, don't hesitate. Thank you, Agnes, for this very interesting presentation. So, do someone has questions to share with Agnes about the project or? Did this presentation arose new questions about NDS in general to you? Yes. I'm sharing you um, a blog article where you have another video explaining what just Agnes just presented you and um, summing up the, the NBS that are displayed in this project. So it's really a project that both foster biodiversity and human benefits and sensibilization from uh, raising awareness both to children, students, and even uh, to the parents of the children that are sensitive to, to NBS. So yes, I forgot to, to, yeah, sorry, uh, I forgot to say that, uh, that um, most of plans and works are uh, donation, donation from the NGOs, donation from the parents, gardener, gardener fathers uh, or or uh, we get got some uh, donation from the municipality of Saget also uh, uh, or both the foundation of the school so it's really an low budget uh, project with uh, significant uh, results so it's very easy to follow uh, for, for other schools also uh, so we have a question from Ronald. Uh, re multi scale NBS are they linked across scales, or is that not a requirement? So I think that Agnes explained that uh, the the school garden is linked to a park, so it builds connection to the neighborhood, and so it can uh, allow creating some uh, 
green connections in the entire city. But maybe, Agnes, you want to talk about that? Yeah, um, my project is really a small scale project, but um, uh, but it could be extended uh, if uh, nearly every uh, school uh, could join to to this program. We can uh, improve the the uh, biodiversity in uh, city scale, maybe also. Uh, but uh, we have possibilities uh, to evaluate uh, these. Uh, these and in nature, nature based solution, uh, nature for cities platform, uh, how effective could be, could be good, uh, uh, different NBSs in a different scale. So it's uh, yes, um, to precise what Agnes is saying. So, as I told you in the beginning of the webinar, so Zeged and the Bird Friendly Garden is one of the pilot sites of Nature for Cities uh, project, so it's going to be assessed with Nature for City Schools to know how mm -hmm. to maybe increase the benefits or multiply the benefits of this NBS to for both for biodiversity, humans, and to meet the urban challenges of the get, such as heat islands and such things. But um, if you want to know more about Nature for City Schools, I'm, uh, I think the, the next breakfast are going to give you more uh, information, so I'm letting Marion present you the, the, the next and upcoming webinar program. <clears throat> so the, the second webinar will take place on the 4th of November, and today we've seen like a global approach of NBS, but um, we wanted to precise a little, a little what could be the steps to help you um, and to help all stakeholders to favor the NBS implementation in their local cities. So one of the steps is to really pay attention to the um, diagnostic step and to the assessment step, because uh, there are lots of things to, to check to be sure to, to choose the most suitable NBS, uh, depending on your local context. And that is what we will we will talk about in the next webinar to to see um, what what are the good questions to ask yourself, what are the good um, indicators to to measure or to calculate um, to so and how to to measure these those indicators so to assess your projects and to be sure to to do the right choice. Then on the third webinar, we will talk about um, more political issues and more uh, stakeholder issues because um, the involvement of all stakeholders is a very important lever. We, uh, the Nature for Cities project has um, made a work about governance models and participation, for example. So this third webinar will talk about uh, how to involve to involve policymakers uh, every every skill every service in cities every expert and inhabitants to to help the NBS implementation and to change mindsets. Then the um, the fourth webinar in January we'll talk about the economic feasibility of NBS projects uh, in Nature for Cities. Uh, there's also a work that has been done about uh, economical models, business models, and how to find the right um, the right um, how to how to help to find the, the finance to to finance your projects and how to have an adapted economic model that will favor the, the integration of nature. And then to finish, we will have a review of the Nature for Cities tool, because the, the final tool of the project will be an online platform, as Mathilde told you. And it's going to be a one-stop shop for your urban project, where you will find on the same platform uh, the steps to help you to create, assess, and implement your projects. So in this platform, you will find um, you will find the NBS Explorer we talked about. You will find find the database of pioneer projects uh, that can inspire you to to get knowledge about NBS and to to see if you have 
some pioneer projects uh, that you can, in a way, uh, be inspired of with your local context. And then you will have tools to help you make a simplified assessment of the NBS you will have chosen. And to finish, you will have uh, tools to help you find the right uh, governance model and um, business model for your NBS project. So I think the, um, this, those five webinars, um, they, they are complementary. You, you can choose to participate to the subjects that you're the most interested in, but uh, you, those five webinars are very complementary. And really do not hesitate to contact us if you have further questions. And we really hope that this first webinar gave you the wish to go further with Nature Based Solutions. And we would be very uh, happy to see you at the next breakfast. And you hope that you are now awake and motivated for your day. And uh, so I really wanted to thank uh, Marion and um, Agnès for this, these presentations. I hope you liked them too. And so we are going to wish you a very nice day.